The Lucky Star by Judy Young, illustrated by Chris Ellison. Author's Note The Great Depression was an economic disaster that began in 1929 and lasted over a decade. Thousands of businesses shut down, leaving millions of people without jobs. Banks closed and people lost their savings. Many families lost their homes, unable to pay rent or mortgages. Items previously taken for granted became unfavorable luxuries as people struggled just to buy food and clothes. Approximately 20,000 rural schools also closed during the Depression. Many more reduced the length of the school year to cut costs. In addition, numerous children dropped out of school to help their families earn money. In 1933, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt established the Civilian Conservation Corps, or CCC. The CCC provided jobs for over 3.4 million men at over 4,000 work camps. Most CCC workers were 18 to 25 years old, but older men, like Ruth's father, were hired to train younger ones. Each worker earned $30 a month, but was required to send $25 home to their families. The CCC planted over 3 billion trees, built 41,000 bridges, and 125,000 miles of roads, strung 89,000 miles of telephone wire, and restored over 4,000 historic buildings. These hardworking men also improved our national and state parks by building picnic areas, cabins, swimming pools, and 13,000 miles of hiking trails. Much of what the CCC built still exists today. When writing The Lucky Star, I specifically chose the books one in the spelling bee and the main character's name so they would be consistent with the time period. The Book of Knowledge was a popular 20-volume set of children's books sold at the time. Ruth was one of the top 10 girl names of the 1920s, when my character would have been born. I chose it in honor of my Aunt Ruth, who was a child during the Great Depression. We don't have much, Mama said. But remember, there's always someone who is worse off than you are, so count your lucky stars that you've got what you got. Mama was always counting her lucky stars. Papa was one of them, and Ruth and her little sister Janie, too. Their little house was a star, and so were their clothes, the food on the table, and even the fact that they had a table. Mama's sky was filled with stars. On summer nights, sitting on the porch steps, she would point up to the sky and say, See that lucky star twinkling there? That one's for the breeze that kept the house cool today. And that one over there, she said, pointing in a different direction, I'm counting that one for the shoes the neighbor gave you. Ruth looked down at her feet and the old brown leather shoes. They were scuffed and creased, and the bottoms were nearly worn through. Feeling twine laced through the eyes instead of shoelaces. When the neighbor handed them to Ruth to try on, Mama said, Count your lucky stars, they are too big for you. You won't grow out of them for a long time. Ruth didn't see Mama's stars. Her sky was big and dark, pitch black. For Ruth, there were no lucky stars shining down on them. Ruth was 10 years old and was supposed to be going into the fifth grade. But it was 1933 and the Great Depression had swept the nation. Millions of people were out of work. Millions of families had very little money for food and clothes, and there was nothing left for luxuries. September was just a week away when Ruth found out that the school was a luxury. The town could not afford to pay teachers or keep the school building lit and warm. Ruth would not be going to fifth grade. Count your lucky stars, said Mama, that you were the star pupil in last spring's spelling bee. Ruth looked at the collection of big red books with the book of knowledge written on the spine in shiny gold letters. They sat in their place on the shelf above her bed. Papa had built that shelf especially for the books. They were her prize for spelling the word perseverance. Ruth knew all about perseverance. It meant to keep trying, even if things were hard. These times required a lot of perseverance. Mama looked at the books, too. You can use them to keep up with your studies, she continued, until they can open the school again. Ruth knew Mama was trying to cheer her up. Ruth loved school, and Mama and Papa were both proud of her. You're going to be our shining star, Ruth remembered Papa saying. You'll be the first in our family to graduate from high school. And Janie, he said, tickling Ruth's little sister, it won't be long, be long before you shine in school, too. Ruth took one of the big red books down off the shelf, trying to hold back tears. 
By doing well in school, she dreamed she would become the brightest star that glittered in Mama's sky. But now that light had been shut off. How am I going to continue my studies without a teacher? thought Ruth. Janie reached out for the book and Ruth handed it to her. She watched as Janie curled up with it on the bed the two sisters shared. Janie was supposed to start school this year. How would Janie learn to read? Ruth looked at Mama and knew she was trying to think of another lucky star. Ruth loved her mother, but she knew Mama would not be able to teach her. Mama had not gone to school, and she did not know how to read or write. Papa could have been her teacher. He had been all the way through the sixth grade, but now he was not here to help. That had been another star that had turned black. Like millions of others, Papa had lost his job. He had worked at the lumberyard for years, but with the bad times, people stopped building. Then the lumberyard owners could not afford to keep him. Both he and Mama found odd jobs to keep food on the table and a roof over their heads, but it had become harder and harder to do. One day last April, Papa came home excited. He had a job. The Civilian Conservation Corps that President Roosevelt had developed to give young men jobs had hired Papa because of his experience in the lumber industry. He would train and supervise young workers coming into the Corps. The whole family was excited. Now they would not have to worry about becoming homeless like so many others. But the good news brought sadness as well. Although Papa had a job, he would not be able to stay at home. He would be sent off to work a camp hundreds of miles away. Papa said he didn't like the idea of being away from his family, but he would be paid $30 a month and would send 25 of it home. Count your lucky stars, Mama had said upon hearing the news, with the money you make, there will still be a home for you if you'd like to come back to. But when Papa went away, it felt like another star burned out of Ruth's sky. Now Mama took the book from Janie, who had fallen asleep. She placed it in back on the shelf and walked into the kitchen. Ruth followed her. I got a job, Mama said, so I'll be gone every morning. You'll have to take care of Janie. Now I need to make biscuits for my lunch. Ruth sat down at the table and watched as Mama mixed flour, shortening, water, and baking powder together. She sprinkled a little flour onto the table. As Mama kneaded the dough, Ruth ran her finger through the flour on the table. She was glad Mama found a job, but it didn't cheer her up about the school closing. While the biscuits were baking, Mama and Ruth walked out onto the porch and sat down on the steps. The sun was going down, and soon the sky would be filled with dots of light. They sat there, quietly, watching the orange and red sky. As the colors faded, the first tiny star began to twinkle ever so slightly. Mama pointed to it. See that star? That star is dim now, but watch it. It will grow brighter. That star is you, Ruth. You will be the lucky star for Janie. And don't worry, I know there's a lucky star out there for you, too. It will come with time. With that, Mama kissed Ruth on the forehead and went into the house. Ruth sat and looked at the star. As the sky darkened, it became brighter and brighter. Ruth thought about what Mama had said and wondered what she meant. Once the sky had completely darkened, Ruth went in the house, too. She lay down in the bed next to Janie, watching the star through the window. Just as she was about to fall asleep, Mama's words whispered in her head, You will be the lucky star for Janie. Ruth looked at Janie sleeping peacefully beside her and smiled as an idea became as bright as a star in her mind. Mama left early the next morning. Ruth helped Janie get dressed, and then she started fixing biscuits for breakfast. Just as Mama had done the night before, Ruth mixed flour, shortening, water, and baking powder together. She sprinkled a little flour onto the table and kneaded the dough. Then Ruth patted the dough flat with the palm of her hand. Janie used the lip of the jelly glass jar to cut out the round biscuits. Ruth put the biscuits on a pan and into the oven to bake. Instead of cleaning the table, though, she lightly spread the leftover flour across the table, forming a thin layer of dust. Janie watched Ruth curiously. When the biscuits were done, the two girls ate them out on the front porch. You won't be able to start school this year, Ruth told Janie between bites, because they closed it. But count your lucky stars, you have me. I will be your teacher. Now run along and bring back your friends. They need a lucky star, too. Tell their mamas they need to be here every day, right after breakfast. Soon, Janie and her friends were gathered in the kitchen around the flour-covered table. I know nobody can afford pencils and paper, but count your lucky stars, we have a little flour, announced Ruth. Placing her hand over Janie's hand, Ruth guided Janie's finger through the flour. 
Go down and curve like an upside-down cane. That's the letter J, Ruth patiently told her. Now make an A like this, she said, guiding Janie's finger. Now a zigzag for an N. The I is easy. Just make a straight line, Ruth said as she made Janie's finger slide through the flower. The E is last, like this, Ruth stated. Ruth let go of Janie's hand. All of the children looked at the letters formed in the flower. That's your name, J-A-N-I-E. Janie, Ruth exclaimed. Ruth smiled at Janie, and Janie smiled back. Then Ruth helped each child write his or her own name in the flower. Soon, names were all over the table. Now go home and practice whenever your mamas make biscuits, Ruth told the children. Mama's job lasted through the fall and winter and into the warm days of spring. Each morning, Ruth made biscuits, and each morning, the children came soon after breakfast. Ruth missed going to school, but she loved teaching the children. They learned to write letters and numbers in the flower. They learned to read and write words and sentences. Some days, they sat on the porch. Using pebbles, Ruth taught them to count, add, and subtract. Then they went back in the house and learned how to write arithmetic problems in the flower. The best part of each day, Ruth saved for the very last. After their lessons, Ruth reached up to the shelf above with her bed, above her bed and pulled down one of the big red books. With the children gathered around her, she opened the book and read aloud. She read about history and people and places. She read about plants and animals, oceans and mountains, and she read about stars. Each day when she finished reading, Ruth turned to the page that showed a picture of a vast black sky dotted with twinkling stars. And each day she whispered quietly, count your lucky stars. Spring was gone, and now it was summertime. Almost a whole year had passed. Ruth still wore the old brown shoes, although they fit a little better now. Papa was still away from home, but the money came every month. The school would still be closed in the fall, but Janie and the other children were learning to read and write. And now at night, when Ruth sat on the porch steps with Mama, she saw how the sky was filled with stars.